So I've got two keyboards here. One is a 40% ortho linear keyboard and this one is a 60% normal layout with the staggered rows. So when we're comparing ortho linear with the staggered keyboards, the kind of main question is, is it worth relearning your muscle memory? Because obviously we've all kind of grown up with uh, staggered keyboards and most of us can type on those. Is it worth reprogramming your mind and your, your muscles to use ortho linear? Is, it, is the benefit worth that investment of your, your effort? So that's what we're gonna find out in this video. Obviously the ortho linear one I'm looking at is a 40% board, so it's slightly smaller than the 60% staggered one. But the principles I'm looking at here only apply to the actual letter keys anyway, so we can compare them fairly. And I actually think there's a really obvious winner and hopefully the video will make that clear. So before we get stuck in, I just wanna mention this channel. It's obviously a very new channel. There are very few subscribers yet. Hopefully that's gonna change with these videos. So the idea with this channel is I'm gonna make videos covering design, usability, and workflow. So all this kind of productivity stuff, looking at products and how we can fit them into our lives to make stuff easier and more fun. So please hit that big red subscribe button and uh, come with me on this exciting journey. So if like most people, you probably use a normal keyboard with the staggered key layout. So that means, you know, as you move your fingers to the correct keys, you have to sort of slightly shift them to the side. And a lot of people say, well, this is because your fingers go out or in, it's actually, well, no, it isn't because when you look at the keys, so if I put my right hand on the home row, on the home keys, so my right hand is on J. Now the index finger on my right hand is supposed to go up to U and the middle finger of my right hand is supposed to go up to I. So that movement is forwards and left. So forwards and in to the center of my body. So away from my elbow, in. Now the equivalent on the left hand is F moving up to T, middle finger moving up to R. But that's actually wrong. You're supposed to use your middle finger for E and your index finger for R. And if you look at a diagram of where your fingers are supposed to go on a keyboard, it's actually, you can see this quite clearly. There's this constant diagonal line. So both your hands move up and to the left and down and to the right. So there's no ergonomic argument for this at all. It's insane. Your your fingers, obviously, you know, you could argue there's a sort of angle like this, you know, maybe if you're if you're supposed to, you know, line the keys up as a fan for each hand or something, you know, there's an there's an ergonomic argument to that. But as it is, you've got to develop this this motion with both hands. Um, there's no there's no I, there's no use for that. It's mad. Um, also, the other thing is as you do move your fingers forwards, you're suddenly confronted with two. If you move your finger forwards, you're in the middle of two keys. So you've got to think, okay, am I going left or right? And then of course you do sometimes have to go left. So let's look at that. So if I put my right hand on J, I need to do Y. That's my index finger as well. So I move my index finger up and left to Y. Now that's about well, quite a stretch. It's, a, it's, it's, it's obviously staggered left from the U, but also then it's a bit further over. Well, the equivalent, on my left hand would be going to uh, T, which is only a little bit over. So I've got two completely different movements for, for left hand, right hands, based on you know going into the center of the keyboard on the row above the home row. So this kind of inaccuracy and this asymmetry is, is throughout the entire board um, and you have to learn this and of course we all have learned that you know most of us can type pretty smoothly on these things now but it's not it's not perfect is it it's, it's not as good as it could be it's kind of funny because I didn't actually realize this whole asymmetrical thing until I started looking at this for this video I kind of assumed in my mind that our fingers were just doing something like going out you know so the equivalent up up row so when you shifted rows your fingers were doing the same kind of thing maybe just staggering out or something and there was some ergonomic logic there but it's not there's no logic there at all it's just arbitrary and if you actually look you know historically look at the old typewriters and you look at how those keys work on the old typewriters you can see the levers under the keys and it becomes very apparent why the stagger is there simply so that the levers can all go under the under the row above and up to the thing the hammers that make the letters on the paper so that's why it's there it's basically skeuomorphism that hasn't gone away so Apple should be right here and adopting ortholinear in their rejection of skeuomorphic design ideas because that's all this staggered keyboard layout is. So the other thing that when you put your fingers on an ortholinear board you realize actually your brain and fingers and everything you know it's much easier to visualize a linear grid you forward and left and right if you want to go up a row it's just forward you can feel the edges of the keys and you know same with left is forward and left whatever to get the diagonal key it's just very very logical you're you're wired to understand that layout rather than having to second guess 
uh, the stagger. And if you want some evidence that this is all just insane, uh, just look at the numpad. So obviously when big keyboards came out, so this is long since typewriters, of course we wanted numpads for people who are entering numbers a lot on computers, and they're in a nice logical grid. So if staggering was beneficial, they would be staggered, wouldn't they? So obviously that's proof that a grid is easier. And of course, if you've used a numpad, you'll realize just how effective that grid is. You know, you can find those numbers dead easy. Uh, so, that, you know, that's kind of proof there's no argument for staggered arrangement in terms of your fingers or your ergonomics. So the interesting thing is actually just how little energy is needed to shift from staggered to ortholinear. It didn't take me long for my fingers to be to be confident typing on an ortholinear board after using staggered my whole life. In fact, I sort of feel like I've been battling the staggered keyboard my whole life and ortholinear is just the way my hands have always wanted to type. So the, the most frustrating thing of all of this is that the iPad keyboard will always be staggered. But it would be really cool to see Apple adopt an ortholinear layout on the virtual keyboard. I think that would just make it so much more logical and cleaner. If there's no need for the stagger in a hardware keyboard, there's definitely no need for the stagger in a software keyboard. So I would love to see that on the iPad. So I hope that uh, has kind of been a little bit interesting with uh, the idea of ortholinear keyboards. If you've looked at one and thought, hey, they look cool, you know, isn't it gonna be a real effort or is it even worth it to switch to one? Definitely is, you know, there's no need for this staggered layout anymore. Let's move on, let's get rid of it. Let's adopt ortholinear and, and uh, embrace these simpler, more logical keyboards. So I'm actually doing a full review of this as well as uh, looking at the difference in the size between a 60% keyboard and this is a 40% keyboard, uh, which is the other kind of main decision that you need to take into account when you're looking at mechanical keyboards. Uh, so subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for those and I'll see you in the next one.